one sector or one area that all three of you are very bullish on is uh, domestic cyclicals, industrials, capital goods, uh, that part of the segment. And that's largely over the last many years been driven by government, government spending. And we just had a session talking about it, returning return to the animal spirits, the private sector making a big comeback. Uh, but while we wait for that to happen, uh, you know, uh, we are in election season now, we'll get manifestos uh, very shortly, and maybe they'll be well detailed with uh, what the next agenda, is, et cetera, is going to be. Uh, Nilesh Bhai, but do you think uh, that is that is the one segment, infrastructure build out in a big way, manufacturing, import substitution, that continues to remain the big area of opportunity led by government spending, what's your view? So one, this is our golden opportunity to capture China plus one. In 1980, we were equivalent to China. Today, they are six times bigger than us. What we lost, we should recapture. One, there are two areas which makes India's manufacturing uncompetitive. One, logistics cost. Second, power cost, apart from many other things. When we had PSU market cap of 15 lakh crore and a deficit of about 3.5 to 4 percent, our divestment program was about 65,000 crore. Today, when PSU market cap is 50 lakh crore and fiscal deficit is about 6 percent, the divestment program is 50,000 crore. Undoubtedly, there is a room to increase divestment. We should use that divestment additional receipts to ensure that we become productive or competitive on power cost and logistics cost. Today, industrial power carries the subsidy of agriculture power. I hope and pray that some political party will put in their manifesto that we will use divestment to ensure that industrial power is free of agriculture power subsidy. The second is the commercial freight, which carries the subsidy of passenger fares. The last railway minister which proposed increase in passenger fare hike, he was sacked by his own party and thereafter no railway minister ever attempted that. Again, use divestment proceeds to take out subsidy of passenger fare from commercial freight. You take this over a period of time, you can't do it in one year, understand that. But over a period of time, and let Indian manufacturing become competitive to the world, go and capture China plus one. In one minute, I'll say what we have missed and what we should not miss. Samsung came to India long before they went to Vietnam. They are today India's largest consumer durable company. They have done very well over here. They run the world's largest single location mobile handset manufacturing plant in Noida. But they went to Vietnam much later after coming to India. They make in Vietnam to sell all over the world. What's their turnover in Vietnam? About six lakh crore. It's six times higher than India. Is Vietnam six times bigger than India? No, it's one twelfth size of India. They contribute about 28% of GDP in Vietnam. Imagine if we had not allowed Samsung to go to Vietnam and kept them in India by providing all incentives and making our manufacturing competitive, where we would have been. We should not let that ever happen. Some of that enabling sort of environment is getting built now, and I think many companies like Apple, et cetera, want to make uh, a lot more here in India. Anish, same question to you uh, with regards to looking ahead in the, th uh, you know, opinion polls, et cetera, all suggest that uh, the BJP, the NDA will uh, come back strongly. If that is so, uh, do you think infrastructure build out and uh, sort of, you know, make in India, those will be the big buzzwords once again? So I'll uh, put it this way, you know, we talk, we put a lot of emphasis on structural reform. Actually, what has worked really well over the last 10 years is actually the cyclical management of the economy. What do I mean by that? When the private sector was not spending, when the economy was in a slump, that's the time when the government should step in and spend, right? Fiscal policy should be counter cyclical. Now, when the private sector has started spending, and I'm not just talking, uh, uh, like, I'll come to what parts of it are spending, but if you see cement demand is good, automobile sector is picking up, the government needs to scale back its spending, right? So fiscal policy should also be counter-cyclical. And what I really am happy to see, right, is that even though we are at this stage in the political cycle, 
fiscal expenditure has not gone out of control. And it's actually very tempting to do that because when the economy picks up, your tax revenues grow and you feel, oh, you are entitled to spend. But actually when the economy picks up, you should be cutting, the government should be cutting spending. So I would not want a big spending boost from the government at this stage. Infrastructure, urban infrastructure is important. That should get built. If urban infrastructure is, uh, is built, home building will happen. People will build homes, right? And uh, the investment cycle will pick up once uh, people build homes. The only one point I'd make, right, there is no inherent merit in exports. You ultimately need exports because you, to pay for your imports, right? There's no inherent merit in them, right? And I actually don't think Indian manufacturing has done badly. If you look at pharmaceuticals, one third of the drugs co consumed in the US are made in India. We export automobiles, right? So the point I'm making is the external account is in balance. We want to attract capital into the country, which by definition means we will run a current account deficit. That's mathematical, right? Once we run a current account deficit, we'll be exporting some stuff, we'll be importing some stuff. We are very good at services, so we export services and we import some manufactured goods. It's not the end of the world. I don't worry about that. Manufacturing will grow if house building grows. If people build houses, you know, somebody was talking about the statistics of air conditioners. Yeah, but you need houses before you can have air conditioners. You're saying a push towards how, uh, urban Home infrastructure? will drive manufacturing. Okay, will uh, drive. Urban infrastructure will drive home building, which in turn will drive manufacturing because there will be domestic demand. And that is, of course, a huge, long value chain, right? Exactly. Uh, exactly. Consumer durables, of course, uh, as well. Uh, yeah. In that chain. Absolutely. Right? right. If, if, if you, like, yeah. today, you have cars and you have automobiles produced in India because those are, like, cars, pharmaceuticals, these are things that don't depend on the size of your house. Mm. Right? You park your car, you park your two-wheeler outside the house. Everything else depends on the size of your house. So how many clothes you can consume, how many sure. shoes you can buy, depends on the size of your house. So sure. if you get urbanization right, if you get home building right, manufacturing will follow. People right. will build if there is demand for it, right. is my simple question. Uh, Prashant, very briefly, uh, same question to you. What's going okay, to be would, the yeah, would agenda be and the investment implication then? I, I think I agree that the focus on, it's reasonable to expect the focus on industrialization and infrastructure build out would continue. I would just add that over the last five, 10 years that we've seen this pick up has been aided by the improvement in soft infrastructure as well. So what I mean by that is ease of doing business. We went from 142nd to 62 the last time that was published and maybe by now we are something like 25, 35 or something. But we should continue um, you know, relentlessly on that front. We would not accept to be 25th best cricket playing country. And in, in same, with same kind of you know, um, um, uh, attachment with ease of doing business, we should continue on that path and that is what then enables physical infrastructure build out as well. Uh, gentlemen, uh, you know, I have a lot more questions, but we're out of time. So thank you all for joining us here on Chasing Alpha. I mean, I dare say for the last couple of years, Alpha has been chasing us. <laughs> and uh, I just hope that that uh, situation continues. Nilesh by Anish Prashant, thank you very much for joining us with that enlightening chat.